new generation in old business is a tough thing. So that's why I'm always advocating the young generation needs a new territory, a new goal. Yeah, and instead of a, of a lengthy self-introduction, I was uh, thinking about let's do something else. Let's um, share our story, the biggest prejudice we had uh, against or no, uh, knowledge about the Gen Z and uh, why that actually changed. Um, so what was the biggest myth we changed in the last 12 months? You can have a few seconds time because I can share mine. Uh, as Esther mentioned, we're a marketing agency, of course, the best agency in the universe. For, uh, of course, uh, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever, you know. Um, but what I want to actually share is um, we have employees from the Gen Z that lasted incredible three days before they um, uh, quit because of a burnout and others doing awesome jobs. And I was really thinking about what makes the difference. And one difference really was is a lot of the ones who excel have parents who are entrepreneurs or dentists. So that was an insight. So if you have somebody in your uh, uh, application process that is a dentist or parents are entrepreneurs, uh, that's maybe a secret hit. All right, um, Mona, what is uh, in, in a prejudice or a myth you had about Gen Z, even no belonging to uh, them, you changed in the last 12 months? So for me, um, 12 months ago, I didn't use it took before. And um, so one myth about the Gen Z is that um, they use TikTok, TikTok and they um, waste a lot of their time doing so and like watching dancing videos and so on. But um, actually, TikTok is a really good learning tool, and I started using it, and um, I'm really admiring the way the search engine works, so when I look for something, instead of shooting, I use TikTok because it gives me personalized information from someone who like already thought about something, and it gives me like personalized feedback, and um, yeah, and in general, so it's like a good tool to learn new stuff, and the algorithm always brings up the stuff I actually want to see. Thomas, how about you? What, what, what uh, kind of myth uh, did you have uh, not belonging to Gen Z um, yourself in the last 12 months? Well, first point, that is interesting. There's a strong debate. Are, are, they, are the followers or the likes which are relevant in TikTok? And it's the likes because yeah. it's the spread, the reach, and so on. And, and what I really discovered that's 24 months ago, uh, starting my TikTok career, I realized that it's not the attention span, but as much the bullshit talk of other generations. And the Gen Z doesn't want to hear bullshit. That was a, a key, it's, uh, usually we as Experts for other generations, we, we say, no, they have a short attention span. No, they make things shorter. Okay. That is number one. And number two, I, I kind of experienced because I had another contact with many Gen Z uh, generationists. It is in a lot of things beyond being consistently online and not wanting to hear bullshit. The generation is not so much different. Hmm. I have, in my age, I have seen Generation X, I have seen Generation Y, and I have seen Generation Z. And it's an excellent business model for Generation X speakers to do Generation uh, Z workshops. Uh, I have seen that with Generation Y and Generation X. Uh, but there are two distinct differences, uh, and that that I learned. Okay. Uh, it's the bullshit, not the attention. Number two, it's the likes and not the followers. That's the old stuff. And number three, it's otherwise the generation is as fragmented as the ones before. All right, thank you. And, and Margarita, from your point of view, um, what kind of myth about the generation? Are you are working for a large insurer in Germany. Um, what kind of myth did you change about the Gen Z Z in the last 12 months? 24 is also okay. 
Yeah, for me, it's very similar to uh, Mona's opinion. Um, I always thought that the level of, uh, of attention is very low, or that they have a very low attention, and that they are lazy workers. But when I tried by myself TikTok, uh, I recognized, wow, it's uh, not just swiping videos and watching 30 second videos, it's uh, a lot more because TikTok is based on um, your, uh, the content is based on uh, your um, um, interests and uh, you can learn very much more from TikTok than uh, the most people think and sometimes or as there was a time that I said, oh man, uh, I learned a lot more from TikTok than from school. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Which, which says totally a lot about our educational system. A topic, <laughs> a to thank you very much, yes. A, a topic we skip, a skip today. Uh, I think that this is very dramatic. Um, we could down, go down now and say, let's, what are the sub-segments of the uh, Gen Z? But I would skip that because we have other great questions too and you, are, you, are so, you have so much insights in your different fields. Margaret, I would stay with you. You are trying to hire Gen Z in overall in insurance, which is already difficult. No, even more, you're trying to hire Gen Z for insurance for the sales, like for agents and, 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 and people. That's like mission impossible. Um, A, what are your experiences there? And what are your three tips that don't get you fired? And you can share with other insurers how to hire and excite these people. Yeah, the first thing is um, recruiting and intention is very, uh, big and important topic for us I mean, since uh, five years, about five years, about five years. And uh, last year we took part uh, in a digital um, recruiting uh, event and we had free learnings from this. Um, first thing is you need to, um, to give the information on demand for, for the young people. They don't uh, need uh, events where you can um, or you listen to about hours, they need it short. And um, that's very important, that's the first thing. And um, they're very into freedom and want uh, a great work-life balance and flexibility. And uh, that's something we offer as uh, self-employed um, for self-employers. Yeah, but the funny thing is, as a former insurance sales agent myself, um, and you have been one too, yeah. you know the fun part, the flexibility part, comes like after years of hard work, in most cases. Yeah. So, so how, you, how, how do you make that happen? So, um, one thing we've learned from uh, Gen Z is that um, they are very hard workers, and they are very into um, earn, earning money. <laughs> Yes, it's true. And uh, in our training program, where we um, support young people going um, into self-employment, um, uh, there they. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> uh, um, where we uh, lead them to be self-employers. Yes, they they um, yeah. show show us how with uh, less effort. They uh, get the most succeed. Cool, cool. Mona, um, you, you're an entrepreneur, and, uh, but you, you are belong to the Gen Z, but you have been also a little bit critical uh, about all that in, in interviews and, and things, and our preparation call, of course, uh, about the relationship about the your generation, of course it's not your generation, but let's say it for the sake of fun of the discussion, about your generation and the impact they want to have on everything they touch. What do you mean by that? I think in general there is a pretty big hype around the generation and what I don't agree with is that this generation is better than any other generation so this is why I see it a bit critical and I would say to name an example um, I recently gave a workshop to, um, to some HR people that asked me about um, like why are Gen Z people having such high expectations when it comes to jobs like why do they want so much money why do they uh, want like, flexible working hours? When we started working, it was not like that, and so on. And then I told them, you know, like you can, like 
say this is a bad generation and they should like change their demands, or you can use it and transform your process because the whole point is we grew up really privileged. Like we we had all the information every time like on demand from when we were born. We're like the generation of digital natives and entrepreneurial mindset. The time has changed, that's one thing. But at the same time, the companies can also see it as an opportunity to change their processes because my generation is a generation that, sh that challenges the status quo and that um, says, okay, if it was normal to earn this money 10 years ago, it's not my standard now anymore. And so the company can think about, but how can we maybe make more money to give them more money? Um, and then also, when we think about Germany, like we're super bureaucratic country, things are slow, we're like very behind in comparison to other com uh, countries. And we can learn from the generation how to speed things up. So this is my view on this generation. Thomas, you have been a senior manager, board member, a senior politician. Um, change a few processes here and there in large organizations. Um, what do you say to that? Uh, is, do you see yourself there? How much do, do, do organizations need to change or, and, and how much is this a myth? Let's be frank about salary. The generation Z knows that our rental system is not valid anymore. Yeah. And they, they know that it's bullshit to say the pension system is working. So, intelligent enterprises and insurances develop intelligent products for those people who know that the pension system can be used as toilet paper. Yeah. Number two, new generation in old business is a tough thing. So that's why I'm always advocating and in some medium-sized companies do it, and the, the huge corporations, they have their little innovation labs. The young generation needs a new territory, a new goal, not an old goal. New work in old business is always a repair station. <laughs> very simple. So that's why the recruitment efforts very often fail. So you have to think about to create innovative spaces, which even people like me with 74 years might enjoy. Yeah. Number three, if you have old products which do not appeal for generation set, why should they work for you? I, I think you really, it's yep. Very simple. So I, I would think about generation set loves mobile work. Some of them say, well, I want to be in Croatia, eight months a year. Do insurers have products for that kind of a lifestyle? Now, many Gen said no, that they never will become a house owner. Does insurers have products? for this kind of lifestyle. Yeah. So, and, and, and those questions really need to be asked and tackled. And what I really like about what you said, and, and I think everybody was very li listening a lot about it, is it's a huge opportunity if the insurance industry would provide products where you would uh, build a little bit of wealth as a surrogate for housing or to prepare housing and to really support uh, this whole generation on their own way. And I think that's actually a, 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 a very profound uh, statement there. I think the next question was a little bit in the direction what do we need to do actually to sell better? And you say actually build products that actually have something to do with their reality. Mona, what do we all know need to do here in this room to sell you better insurance? And I'm a former sales agent, so be aware what you say. Yeah, because in the, in the briefing we talked about what kind of insurance do I actually have, and I have a health insurance and nothing else. Um, <laughs> so I, I think you can work on me. <laughs> I, <laughs> So, so I said a liability insurance is super important, you know, for all people there out there, so, but she still covers somewhere else. But no, all kidding aside, 
what does an insurer need to do that you go tomorrow to an agent broker or a website or an aggregator and say, this is what I'm going to do, this is a high point of my day? What I need to see is probably like either a friend that tells me, hey, this is what I'm using or this is what I'm doing. And I'm an entrepreneur, so for me it's like even a bit, I, I use probably different products than most of the people in my generation. But um, I usually ask my friends that are kind of in the same age, so I'm 21, um, what are you using? Is it actually necessary? Did I pay for this monthly or like can I skip it and make money different ways? And like, how much does it cost me if I don't have the insurance? And is it like, is it valid for me to actually like make like put money into insurances? That's like one thing. And the other thing is, uh, I need. It would also help me to see an Instagram story or a TikTok of someone that I know that tells me hey, I'm using this, and it really helped me because otherwise I would now have to pay this amount of money, or uh, I would other ways, um, or I had a situation that was like this, like I, for example, my car didn't work or so, and then um, the insurance paid for it, like something like this, where I have a po positive example, and I'm like, oh, it's actually a really small investment that I can put in monthly that will help me save thousands of euros in the long run. So um, yeah, I kind of just want to see the monetary value and, and also feel the pain of it. Like someone needs to tell me what's the pain if I don't have that, and then I, I buy it. Very good, very good. I, think, I hope you all took notes. Margaret, um, you, you, you tried to hire yourself. You are in the depth of Gen Z. You are hiring them. You're trying to excite them for for the insurer, uh, and you know they are probably going to their own peers then. And you are in direct contact in all these programs. Uh, what do you, out of your daily business, and you have been a sales engineer yourself? How, what, how can we sell insur insurance policies better? We heard a little bit of something of Mona. Um, what do you what do you say? We have a new product on the market now, um, and this is a unique standing point. Um, we offer uh, occupationally um, insurance, uh, which offers you a work-life balance option. So um, if you are on a sabbatical year or parental leave, um, you can adjust your um, insurance sum. And uh, after that, you can um, um, adjust it um, uh, again and uh, you don't need to do another health check. That's the really cool thing um, for someone who works in travels or who wants to um, yeah, take a break from work. Um, and that's the uh, insurance you really need. <laughs> yeah. And um, it's very important to be transparent with your information to highlight them, not uh, to give too much much information, and um, like like in life insurance or in health insurance, uh, there are always a lot of papers, um, and the uh, access is uh, very very difficult yeah. for um, Gen Z or for all um, customers. And uh, another thing is the, the service. Um, that um, insurance offers. So um, we uh, offer a wide uh, range of apps, especially in health insurance. Then you can um, get the app Balloon, for example. It's a meditation app, and uh, as a customer, we get this for free. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much for, for, for those insights out of the machine room of, the, of an insurer. Um, Thomas, um, you are a, you're a very special breed. Uh, if, I may, if I may allow, you are on the one hand super close to Gen Z because of your social media presence, uh, your media presence. On the other hand, you are super close also to decision makers because you are you were one uh, for yourself. My question to you is a little bit, if you would be the CEO of uh, the insurer present in this room for one day, what are like the three things you would change immediately? If I would be the CEO of an insurer. Yeah. Oh. I, the, what I learned in, in my 40 years in business, there are very few big shots which can be done right away. But I know that Allianz, for example, tried to break up their, media, their, their sales agent chain since many years and always failed. So I would 
If I would be the CEO of Allianz, I would create a new call where I would remodel my whole business and make it like I want it, but on the free field, not in the old organization. Number two, I would introduce stock options. Because that's the only valid thing where you really can make money and prepare for the age. It's true. And, uh, and, and number, number three, I would create a, a startup ecosystem. If I'm a smaller insurer of seven, eight startups, if I'm a larger insurer of 30, 40 startups around me, but on arm's length. Yeah. Mona, if you would be the CEO of an insurer for one day, what's the thing you would do or add maybe? I would add corporate influencers, so I would have like at least 10% of all the employees that just like always post stuff about how great the company is and then how great the products are. That's the first thing. And then, uh, but also be critical about it, like not only shop the positive things, because what's important is the authenticity and as we learned, uh, we don't like bullshit. So. Very good. Um, one thing, um, and then another thing would be um, to to speak to the generation through the platforms they use. I think this already happens with most of the insurance companies, but in general, if you're not at TikTok, Instagram, whatever, they're not existent for the generation. So be make sure that you have a good presence there, and because this is the number one search engine where people look for you. Um, and then the first thing, make it seem fun. Like, from the outside, it looks like insurance companies have this. Too much fun. <laughs> it doesn't look that much fun. Yeah. <laughs> but you, I'm sure there are many ideas that I can also share later okay. to make it seem more fun. Okay, you, you never had a meeting with a regulator yet, so they are actually ruining all the fun. Shout out to Frank there. Um, all right, uh, I will want to do a quick, uh, a quick round of a quick questions because Esther is already doing like this. Gen Z will us will surprise us because Marguerite. Gen Z will surprise us because uh, they show us how easy uh, and how fun uh, the insurance industry can be, and uh, they will show us how we can. Um, put less effort and uh, bring good solutions and uh, a good process into, cool. into the company. Thank you. Thomas, Gen Z will be the greatest insurance salespeople ever because? They won't have any work in the future. <laughs> okay, they won't have any work in the future. I will take over. Um, Mona, Gen Z will drive insurance sales customers by? Influencers. Thank you very much for sharing that, for all of that. Thank you very much. Round of applause.